Good morning, my friends. Uh, it's Sandra Clay here. Ooh, a little crooked this morning. Uh, it's Sandra Clay. I'm the pastor at Cook's United Methodist Church, and um, I welcome you to the gift of this day um, that God has given us. I, it's a little cloudy and dreary here in uh, Wilson County, warmer than it typically is here towards the end of October. But every day, no matter where we are, uh, no matter what the weather is, no matter the circumstances of our life, it is a good thing for us to be in the presence of God. And so I'm so glad that you've joined me this morning. Welcome to those of you who um, are, are join us on a regular basis uh, on live stream here on the uh, Cook's page. Uh, but we also want to extend a welcome to those of you who are joining us um, on YouTube or as our uh, videos are posted a little later on Facebook so that you can uh, use them, share them, uh, refer back to them. Uh, we hold you in our hearts already and we are praying for God's uh, providential care and for God's uh, blessings uh, to be revealed in your life. Um, and if there's anything specific that we can pray for, uh, we invite you to do one of two things. You can share them on the in a chat box uh, here as you watch the um, watch the the devotional time or you can uh, go to our website and make sure that you send a private prayer uh, request there and we will be holding you uh, we are so glad uh, to be able to find uh, more meaning and more power in our stories. M um, most of you know that I've spent um, six weeks in a re time of renewal leave, um, and God was so precious and good to me and with me uh, during that time. And one of the things that I discovered, um, I, well, I already knew it, I just wasn't paying attention to it, is the remarkable impact that our stories, how we spend every day of our lives, that life is a gift from God, every day of that life is a gift from God, uh, chock full of opportunities to know him, know God, to serve God, to love each other, to love ourselves, all of that good stuff. And uh, I, I think we look to people of faith, especially from scripture or those that are, are major players in our own life, and it's easy to forget that we have the same kind of impact that those people have had on us on everybody that we meet. So what we're doing uh, in these next couple of weeks is we're spending time looking at lesser known um, brothers and sisters who went way before us from both the Old Testament and the New Testament and discovering the power of their stories because they are living, they lived rather, the same kind of challenges that you and I are facing today. May we find courage um, truth uh, and power from their experiences but more than anything this is what I prayed during my six weeks is that when you and I can share together uh, in a time like this morning that we would understand that as our story unfolds that we could live more fully into the power of God present with us and in us as well. You can see on the screen there that today we're going to be uh, talking about Abigail. Abigail um, is an Old Testament character. I, 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 I don't know how else to say that, so forgive my ignorance. Um, so Because she's not a character, she is a person. And in God's great uh, and gracious mystery, she lives on too because of her faith in God, even though it was a bazillion years ago. Uh, that we're going to engage with uh, how she uh, tackled life's issues. So you can find most of Abigail's most of Abigail's story in 1 Samuel chapter 25. Uh, I'm going to tell most of it just uh, in a narrative form, and then we're going to pick and parse out uh, some of the verses there that you might hear straight from Scripture about um, what an amazing woman uh, she was. Abigail was married to a man named Nabal. Now scripture says that I'm not saying it first, I'm just repeating what the word says. His attitude matched his name. So evidently Nabal was not uh, the most um, 
was not a, a pro, it was not prolifically represented in the community because women were not naming their children that very often. Uh, and his attitude was nasty. He was wealthy. Uh, he had uh, ranking and status in the community, but that does not mean that he had respect as a person. Uh, that tells me, as strange as it is to say, that the day in which Nabal and Abigail lived was a lot like ours because um, we uh, nod to and we tolerate a lot of, uh, of horrible behavior from some folks because we think their uh, money or their place in our culture uh, keep, makes them untouchable. So just just a thought there. Anyway, he have, was a hard man and he did evil things. That's what scripture says. Scripture also says that Abigail was intelligent and attractive. I love more than anything that instead of in, uh, describing her as a beauty with brains, uh, scripture describes her as uh, brains that were also beautiful uh, and and so we get a picture of why that's important as we continue to understand um, this uh, first picture into Abigail's life so here's the setup David is not uh, yet king David and uh, his army uh, almost 400 strong are in the uh, in the outlying areas um, of the Holy Land and in their presence they are providing a watchful eye uh, over those that belong to God villages towns uh, and uh, keeping an, a watchful eye on them in order to support them in the case of um, an enemy onslaught uh, picking a fight, a stronger armies picking a fight with folks who can't defend themselves. And so they are the defense of God's people. And they were running low on resources. And so a contingent from David's army goes to Nabal, who is out shearing his sheep one day, and, and presents their case. Can you help us with some food? Can you help us with some resources? We are here to protect you and to watch over you. And literally Nabal's response that could be verified uh, by both David's army, but also Nabal's own servants is, why am I gonna give my hard earned stuff to people I don't know? I don't know if they are gonna respect it. I don't know whether they deserve it. I don't know what they're going to do with it. And so you know what? No. That's what he says. Okay, so David's representatives go running back to David and tell him exactly what happened. Now David is ticked and he's ready to pick a fight with Nabal on his own. Nabal's servants go running to Abigail as if they've done it before. And they say to her, uh, this is not going to go well. We know because we've been out in the field. They have watched over us and they have taken care of us and they deserve this. But because Nabal had nothing to offer them, we're in trouble. We could potentially be in trouble. And they asked Abigail, can you do something? Okay, now we have to take a break just for a second and remind ourselves. This was a patriarchal society. Um, the, culture, uh, the culture said that um, a woman only had voice and power as it related to father, husband, head of household if she was under someone else's care. So Abigail, uh, in, ingenious, intelligent, creative, um, capable as she is, lives in a culture that says, uh, Nabal says what's going to happen. Yet, I want you to get this. She wasted no time. Well, first of all, I want to, I, I want to, this is the close of verse 17. 
uh, you need to know this, is what the servants were saying to her. You need to know this and figure out what to do, for there's going to be trouble for our master and his whole family, and he is so ill-tempered that no one can talk to him. That's Nabal. And listen to what Abigail does. Abigail wasted no time. She quickly gathered, are you ready for this? 200 loaves of bread, two wineskins full of wine, five sheep that had been slaughtered, nearly a bushel of roasted grain, a hundred clusters of raisins, and 200 fig cakes. She packed them on donkeys and said to her servants, go on ahead, I'm following shortly. But she didn't tell her husband Nabal what she was doing. As she was riding her donkey into a mountain ravine, she saw David and his men coming toward her. David had just been saying, a lot of good it did to help that guy. We protected his flocks in the wilderness and nothing he owned was lost or stolen. But he has repaid me evil for good. May God strike me and kill me if even one man of his household is still alive tomorrow morning. Okay, first let me say, I, 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 am, not, uh, I am not in agreement with this. I, I don't think it's wise for us to say that David's response was fair and gracious because that's just simply not the truth. Uh, but I do know that that was a different culture then, and we see and reason things differently now. But we have to, uh, there's not an eye for an eye anymore. Jesus had a lot to say about that, but that's another, uh, that's another morning. Uh, I want you to hear these last few verses, and then we're going to talk about the lessons we learned from Abigail. When Abigail saw David, she quickly got off her donkey, bowed low before him. She fell at his feet and said, I accept all the blame in this matter, my Lord. Please listen to what I have to say. I know Nabal is a wicked and ill-tempered man. Please don't pay any attention to him. He is a fool, just as his name suggests. But I never even saw the young men you sent. Abigail goes on to talk about recognizing the hard work of David and his men and wanting to be able to support them. And she asks, please forgive me if I have offended you in any way. The Lord will surely reward you with a lasting dynasty for you are fighting the Lord's battles and you have not done wrong throughout your entire life. Well, now that's a little bit of a stretch we know. But Abigail is not just throwing lip service. She is finding the agency, my friends, to do what she can. And in a very um, a surprising way, because she lived in a patriarchal society, she was risking ridicule, if not rejection, on her own to step outside of Nabal's permission to be able to respond in the appropriate and gracious and kind way to David and to his army. She spoke all of that stuff from a personal position, but we've got to give nod to this as well. That was kind of gutsy for girlfriend to get off her donkey and ask for or take an audience with the soon to be king and to say, I take the responsibility myself. Please take these provisions. We are appreciative and grateful for what you have done for us and we believe in you. Please let it fall on me. We live in a culture today that has just as many problems with its attitude as a patriarchal society does. By that, we don't take responsibility for our own stuff often, much less what somebody else has done because we don't see and honor our connectedness unless it does something for us. Abigail was prepared and able at a moment's notice to put all of those provisions together to get her servants ready and to head on out. Now I'm guessing Nabal got word. Eventually, you just don't move that kind of product on two donkeys with just a servant or two. 
but Abigail was courageous enough to know that she didn't have to be stuck between a rock and a hard place, between David's anger and Nabal's arrogance. She had autonomy and she had agency to be able to do what she could do. Now, I'm just gonna warn you, this reminds me of my favorite verse. So those of you who don't know this, I, uh, my prayer really is that this is written on your heart because it is how God made you. Uh, in his letter to Timothy, Paul wrote these words to him. For God did not give us a spirit of fear or timidity, but one of power and love and self-discipline. My friends, stop waiting for somebody else's permission for you to live in the power that God has invested in you. You may not have all the resources that you want, and it may be a challenge when some people come to you and say, I need some help. But God created us, just like we talked about Mordecai last week, this moment could be uh, for such a time as this moment and you have all that you need you have the very Spirit of God bringing breath into your lungs you have the mind of Christ if you have surrendered yourself to him and it is he who lives inside you you have all that you need even if your household is filled with navels the other thing I think we need to to recognize too is that sometimes that spirit of Nabal lives inside us. We don't want to share any our time, we don't want to share our resources, we're afraid that we will never have enough. If, and if I give some of my junk away, then I'm not going to have enough junk for myself. Abigail believed in the abundant promise and presence of God. Uh, we confuse wanting and needing all the time. God will take care of you. And God will use you to offer care to another person, another family, other sojourners on uh, life's journey. It may be that we sacrifice um, our focus for the day in order to be diligent in prayer for another person. It could be that we spend our time and our energy that we thought we would be able to spend on this thing, this task, but now I, I need to do this instead. I believe Abigail knew about her own capacity and her own abilities, and she was willing to surrender those to God so that they could be used for God's glory. I, I don't know what other lessons you might draw from her life, but I encourage you to read her whole story. I do want a uh, spoiler alert, I, and you may already know this, but Nabal dies of a heart attack. I mean, he his own meanness got the best of him. Let that be a lesson. But after Nabal's death, she was not left to her own devices. Remember, she's still in that patriarchal culture. David took her as his wife and cared for her. He saw the value, not just the beauty, but the value of a capable, wise, creative uh, person who lived into their agency and authority. And so I uh, encourage you, my friends, to take your authority seriously for the one who, uh, who created all that is life has created you with power and purpose. Go live it today. Go live it today knowing that you are enough and that God goes before you. Would you let me pray for us? Lord, we thank you for our sister Abigail and for the guts that she showed in dealing with the nastiness that can come even from within the walls of our own homes sometimes. But she never let that dampen her creativity, um, the way her mind worked, and the, and the agency with which you enabled her, you empowered her to be able to live and move. We thank you for those sweet relationships between her and her own servants who had the courage to come to her and tell the truth and then align themselves with her so that they could help as well. 
Help us to see in our own lives, Lord, that we are not without partners here ourselves. And above all else, you, the one who authored our authority, the one who authors our life story, the one who has given us all the resources you go before us to. There's no telling what we could do if we trust in your presence and we live into our power. That's our prayer today, Lord. And I ask that all those who hear the sound of my voice would pray that for themselves without ever hesitating. The world and the enemy at work in the world would say, Psh, that doesn't apply to you. And that is not true. Help us stand in our truth today, Lord, and we give you glory in all that we are able to accomplish. For it is by your power, by your spirit, by your love and your grace that we are. In the name of Jesus, we offer our thanks and this prayer. Amen. My friends, enjoy this beautiful day and know that you are enough. I'll see you soon. Bye.